Hello and welcome. My name is Sunshine Amos, the CEO and Project Manager, Sunshine Resources. In this video, we shall be talking about some of the basic things you will do when making bar soap. And so if you have not watched a full flesh video on how to make bar soap, I have dropped the link in the description box below this video. And um, if you are new to this channel, I suggest you click on the subscription button so that you get posted of all our videos and resources each time we upload them. Now, just like I said earlier, in this particular video, we shall be talking about what you need to do when making bar soap. And I will also attempt to answer some of your frequently asked questions and also throw light on marketing strategy. Now, normally when making bar soap, the most ideal oil is the palm kernel oil, also known as PKO. It's going to give you a much harder soap. Please bear in mind that you have to adjust the specific gravity of the lye solution to 1275. Okay, and just like I said in the main video, when making bar soap, the two most important ingredients are the PKO and lye solution. All other materials are not necessary. We call them additives. Okay, you can only use additives such as sodium sulfate, sodium silicate, soda ash, borax, or kaolin if you want to boost the quality and quantity of your soap. Otherwise, just by combining lye and palm kernel oil is enough to give you a good quality soap. Okay, you can take off from there. I usually suggest that if you want to run a test production or you are doing soap for the first time, I suggest that you leave the additives alone. Just combine your lye and palm kernel oil just to see how your soap is going to come out. Okay, all right. Now the next thing we're going to talk about is measurement. Measurement. This is where many people run into trouble. Measurement of materials. I conducted an analysis recently to find out why most people run into trouble in this area. And I realized that it is because mathematics is involved. I remember back then in school, most people don't like doing mathematics. And to some that even understand the mathematics, they don't know how to apply it to soap production because in the math class we are not taught how to apply math in event of life. In soap production for example you have to be conversant with measuration very important such as unit of measurement, conversion of unit from grams to kilograms, centimeter cube to cubic liters to liters. These are all very important. You need to understand this concept and be familiar with some measuring devices such as measuring cylinder weighing balance or weighing machine for you to be able to make progress in soap production. I need to pay attention to what I'm going to say here now. This is very, very important. Um, when making bar soap, whatever quantity of lye that you want to use, make sure you make use of two times the quantity of oil. The quantity of oil will always be two times the quantity of lye. Now take for example, you are using 4 cups of oil, then you must use 2 cups of lye. The cups you are using for measuring the oil and the lye must be of the same volume. Okay, The cups we are talking about here must be of the same volume. 4 cups of oil will require 2 cups of lye, the same size of cup. Do not use a bigger cup for oil and use a smaller cup for lye. That will not work. You have to use the same size of cup for the two liquid. Four cups of oil will definitely require two cups of lye. Four cups of oil will definitely require two cups of lye. And just like I said earlier, the size of the cup does not matter as long as you maintain the same ratio. Now, if you want to use bucket, it's the same ratio. Four bucket of oil and two bucket of lye. Four bucket of oil two bucket of lye. The size of the bucket should be kept constant. The size of the bucket should be kept constant. The same size. Don't use a bigger bucket for measuring oil and use a smaller bucket for measuring lye and say bucket is bucket. No, that doesn't work. It has to be same size of bucket. The size of the bucket must be kept constant because we are working with ratio here. There must be a constant. Okay. Now, even if you're using spoon, Let's say you're using spoon, okay? Here you're going to use four spoons of oil and two spoons of lye. 
same size of spoon okay same size of spoon we are maintaining the same ratio now if you're using eight cups of oil it means that by this ratio you're going to measure four cups of lye the ratio of lye to oil must be one to two the ratio of lye to oil must be one to two the amount of oil used must be two times that of lye this is by default the amount of materials that will make your soap not to be toxic to the hands of the user okay and by default is assumed that when you make use of eight cups of oil and four cups of lye you will notice that the oil the quantity of oil is two times that of lye and by default all the oil will neutralize the quantity of the lye to form soap okay so even if you're using drum it is supposed that four drums of oil will always take two drums of lye now the next thing i want to talk about is the mold when making practice at home you want to practice how to make bar soap you can use any mold it doesn't matter you can improvise any plastic material or wood material for your mold but if you want to go commercial silicon mold is the best okay silicon mold is the best if you want to go for commercial production now the next point i want to talk about is the business side of it this is where most people are interested in sometimes people call me to ask me i want to go into bar soap and i want to go into commercial production of bar soap and then um, the first question i ask them is that have you done bar soap production before and the, and uh, most of the time the answer i get is no this is what i tell them first in first forget about the business side of it first in first learn to master the art and craft of soap making you can only achieve this by practicing production at home prepare soap for the family use and test your ability to perform a skill this is very important um, you need to understand who you are you want to go into a venture are you really good in it are you talented in it test your performance test your ability to perform a skill after you have learned how to do something test your ability to do it can you do it you know repeat the process as many times as possible and see how your skill develop this is very important when you make the soap use it to wash your clothes and draw conclusion about your soap if it is nice if it's foam very well make sure you draw an objective conclusion for yourself do not say it's fine just because you want to glorify yourself now if you cannot draw any logical conclusion then give it to neutral people to use it in form of survey and get a feedback from them you have to run this process several times in order to develop a good branding for yourself every production will give you an insight and experience production expose you to physical nature of chemicals you start to understand their behaviors when they interact with each other even when you make mistakes mistakes are building blocks for experience by the time you get it right you now have the mental capacity stock enough to be able to create your own soap in a special formula to everything in life there is a protocol some people will call me and say so i want my soap to look like that of eva or doof when the owner of eva and doof was having sleepless night developing and branding his soap were you there why will he give you his formula you have to develop your own formula this is the reason why all these skills are not found in academic book because they are intellectual properties so don't be lazy develop your own formula when you create a product of your own and it meets a value in the market, it makes you happy. If your product is good, it sells itself if you take it to the market. You also have to have marketing strategy. For example, I remember when we first produced our product those days, we gave away almost half of the product for free for a test. But that's how to start a business. When people make use of the product and they notice that it is fine, they will then ask for the price and we were smart. We will give them a price cheaper than the one in the market. Now the next thing you hear is that this product is cheap and nice because that is what people want. In business, you do this in order to pull customers close to you. By the time you have gathered enough customers, then you can start to raise the price up. At that time, they are already used to your product. You have succeeded in creating a relationship between your product and the society. This is what makes entrepreneurship kings. Ability to control the society using a product of value you created. So thank you very much for watching and God bless you if you like this video. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can visit our website on www.sunshineresources.org.ng. 
you can visit our YouTube channel on youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Sunshine Resources SRTV. You can also follow us on our Facebook page on Sunshine Resources. Thank you very much for watching and God bless you.